Okay, everybody, uh, welcome back to my tutorial on OpenAI. Um, I'm the retro environment. We're going to, um, today we're going to install Neat to uh, evolve a network that'll play Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, if you guys don't know what Neat is, it's, uh, it's uh, okay, well, here it is right here. Neural Evolution of Augmenting Topologies. It's a genetic algorithm. Uh, developed by Ken Stanley in 2002. There are multiple versions of it, multiple upgrades of it, uh, hyper neat, all these things. Uh, we're going to just use the standard neat right now, a feed forward neural network that's evolved using neat. Uh, I find it works quite well. I was able to beat the first level of Contra and the first level of Donkey Kong Country with it. It has not yet beat the first level of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, but we'll show you that later. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, here we go. We'll just start installing stuff. So right off the bat, you should um, get yourself into your tutorials folder. If you don't know how to do this, you need you need to be in your the proper environment. The here I'll I'll, I'll show you how to do it. You go you basically go into your tutorials uh, folder, and then you're gonna do a source bin activate, and that will get you into the tutorials things right here. See this? This means we're in the tutorials environment. And that means we get pip freeze. Uh, this is, we have uh, git, what do you call it there? OpenAI retro from last time. I'm a mumble, mumble face today for some reason. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, the, the version of neat we're going to use is uh, neat Python. Um, this code reclaimers repository seems to be the best source of it. There's a note in here about how he's not updating it anymore, and these two folks, Dr. Alan Smith, Dr. Alan Smith, and Ben NR01, have been extending it. Uh, it's true they have, and they fixed a bunch of problems as well. Um, it's hard to say which of the two is the best one so anyways just today we're just gonna work with the old one because I'm pretty sure it works I think there was one point in time when I had to manually edit some of the code though hopefully we don't have to do that this time but if we do that's fine we'll we'll do it uh, it could be a fun thing we, we'd have to I don't know up up submit a uh, portal quest maybe that could be fun okay so we're gonna check pip pip search neat uh, neat dash Python. That's the one right there. Um, we're going to pip install neat dash Python. And there we go. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to clone this repository because it has some examples that are kind of handy. So we'll just do git clone. Should be two seconds. Okay. So let's go check that out, neat-python. So yeah, there's an examples folder, which we will go into. And they have all these different examples. Some of these are actually gym environments, not retro environments, but gym environments. The OpenAI Lander, uh, which is kind of neat. Also, if you want to look at how you can use just the standard OpenAI gym, not the retro one. But right now we're going to check out Zor, because I'm pretty sure this example works. So he's provided a bunch of um, files in here. The one we're currently interested in is Evolve Feed Forward. Uh, let's actually have a look at that. Evolve. Um, so this is a uh, XOR ZOR file. Basically, you get some inputs and then it predicts an output for you. Uh, I just we're just going to run this just to verify that it works. We're not really super interested in how it works right now. Python evolve feed forward dot pi. Whoop! Doesn't work. We need we need some libraries. Okay, pip install graph viz. Learn to spell, Lucas. Cool. Uh, we need matplotlib. Pip install matplotlib. Ooh, that installed a bunch of other stuff too. That's fine. Let's try now. Okay, there we go. Whoa, that was quick. <laughs> uh, get out of here. It's all stuff. So, let's see what happened. Uh, there's some, for example, here we are. It did, how many generations did it run? 
it ran 27 generations and then it met a fitness goal so this is all just gonna look like chaos right now but when we build it with sonic it will make much more sense so for example let's just break down one of these things running generation 25 uh, population's average fitness is 2.45 the standard deviation of 0.48 um, best fitness was 3.5 this is all meaningless to you guys achieved by species number five ID 3715 um, the genetic distance that's whether or not it's speciated or not population of 151 members in five species so neat works by creating a genetic pool uh, of randomly generated networks uh, and then testing those networks fitness in the environment that it specified so with the Zor it's basically how well did it predict the proper output of the Zor um, the differences between the networks it, you basically you generate the genomes you test their fitness and then you take the top genomes and you mate them and you basically add the two together or subtract them you can do it however you want but that's the idea and then the resulting children of the genomes are a combination of their parents so a combination of the most successful genomes <laughs> give birth to new genomes and then there's an introduction of a small randomness to the uh, to the thing so something small will change like a, a percentage will go up or down by a little bit uh, over time what happens is you end up every generation you end up with a more fit for the problem that you're trying to solve a, gen a genome uh, so for, what we've got here is the uh, oh the other thing too is species so if two genomes are different by a certain amount of genetic distance which is a a uh, calculation that you can specify yourself however you want to do it like maybe how many nodes there are whatever they, they have a, the python neat has its own set of how it does it by default and that's all we're going to work with right now but you can get super detailed with it anyways this this particular uh zor had uh, five different species so each each species uh, gets an id and then uh, f uh, how many generations that species was around for how many members of that species there are so the first species only has five members uh, species two which is around for 21 has 33 members species five which is only around for eight generations had 52 members uh, and then you'll notice they specify their fitness as well uh, sometimes two different species can mate but uh, it's a smaller random chance uh, stagnation is how many generations have gone without an increase in fitness so that's you it, the stagnation is bad uh, th this was a really good a good thing so the other thing we should look at while we're looking at this is let's go to examples Zor uh, evolve feed forward so one of the things to look at is the config file here the config file for this particular we'll go through all of this later I know it just I'm just going through it real quick ignore that the config path for this uses the config dash feed forward file so let's go find that config dash feed forward okay so this is a really important part of neat you need to specify a lot of initial conditions uh, right now we'll show that there's a population of 150 that's how we start uh, the fitness criterion is max so the first genome to hit the max value of 3.9 so it looks like generation 27 hit yeah there you go 3.93 so generation 27 was the first generation where at least one of the genomes achieved the fitness of 3.9 um, at that point in time this particular thing does this really fancy stuff where it gives you graphs average standard best uh, you can see these are over the generations so at the start it started with three it was doing three and then a generation was like what is that 17 uh, spike 
and then it plateaued for a bit, and then another spike in fitness increase, and then finally it achieved the goal of 3.9. So this file, it also has like the types of activations that are possible. We will we will adjust some of these things. The uh, spe species compatibility threshold is currently set to three. I find with Sonic in some of these games, you need a lower value, but again, we will go through all of this. It's a lot, so I'm just crash coursing you right now. Um, yeah, he's also included this, whoever wrote this library originally has included a uh, visualization, set of visualization tools. They're kind of cool. So here's the resulting network. Uh, it's the A, these are the inputs. These are just, so basically this network has um, two nodes. So one additional hidden layer with two nodes in it. And uh, some, there's a connection to 400, but this is a turned off connection. This connection jumps directly to A or B, B, and then this one here, uh, these are the values associated with them. We would have to go into detail about how all that works, but basically it's it's got an input, an output, and a middle layer, and these are the connections. It's really extremely hand, handy thing. Uh, we don't really care about that right now though. So yeah, this also gives us a speciation so this is generations and population, size per species. So as a species um, gets older without a increasing in fitness, the number of that species tends to die off. So you can actually have a species go extinct. You can also set it to not go extinct. Again, these are variables in the thing. It's complex. Uh, yeah, here's our winner right here, actually, I think, right? You didn't show up till way later on and then kicked ass. Okay, so that is neat. I guess, how much time have we got left? Uh, I think we're going to wrap this up now, and in the next episode, we'll start jamming this into um, Jim Retro. If you guys have any questions, just post them in the comments. Uh, I'm happy to answer. Uh, I'm going to be posting this on Vimeo, YouTube, and uh, a PeerTube channel, so there's lots of options. You can also find my Mastodon account, which is uh, a link to in the description below. All these things I'll link to in the description below, wherever you found this. Um, yeah, and my website is lucasthompson.com. You can find all the stuff there eventually. Cheers.